Well, hey, EVTV. Here's Anna Kloppenborg with that EVTV Amsterdam update. Next week, we're at the Electric and Hybrid Trade Show. Last week, we were trying to get that e Beetle out of the shop. In between, we really have a little bit too much <laughs> on our plate right now. Uh, but we did find time to get involved in a couple of new projects that all center around a relatively small, lightweight, mobile power solutions based on lithium Calb CA series cells. Earlier this week, I made delivery to a new EVTV Amsterdam customer, a real cool customer, so to speak. Let's take a look. Hey, we're here at Automotive Appeldoorn and Cargo Cool. Mr. Teun Roraya is a uh, leader of the pack here, and we have a lithium-powered cooling truck that does ice cream on the beaches of Holland. Uh, the owner of the car has a slight problem, namely he can't keep his ice cream cold for long enough. He's got uh, two 12-volt packs based on 100 amp hour lithium cells, and now they're going to be installing uh, two 12-volt packs based on 180 amp hour lithium cells delivered by EVTV EU. So when the kitties will be getting their ice cream, can I open this door? It should be here somewhere. Up oh, here. Here we go. So it's be kitties, kitties, ice cream, ice cream, you scream, and we all scream for Cal CA series cells. Should be good. So that's Automotive Roraya, also known as Cargo Cool, uh, and their ice cream truck, a little ice cream cart for on uh, the beaches. Now that was just uh, one of their smaller customers. In fact, they are currently working on a tender for a large nationwide customer that does transport of medicine. And they now have new little containers that can go into any truck or even delivery van that have their own autonomous cooling and a little 3G chip and they can call home and uh, complain if they start getting too warm. Um, the guy from Cargo Cool explained that these medicines that they're transporting around um, little boxes can go for 10 or 20 thousand uh, euros and it really doesn't do to have them not be completely uh, uh, temperature controlled from uh, A to B wherever they may be or whatever uh, delay you may have so um, my lead acid battery didn't have enough juice just doesn't cut it anymore and they're now looking to uh, replace uh, a large part of the already existing cooling fleet uh, with lithium battery solutions. So a very interesting new opportunity for our cells to come out and play and uh, the company contacted us because they're very happy that we have them in storage, uh, can do warranty and service on them and uh, you know we try and pick up the phone when you give us a call. So <laughs> anybody else had that problem please try me again. We've been busy <laughs> but we're doing our best. That wasn't the only mobile lithium solution we got into this week, though. Uh, we had an opportunity. The local rep from Golden Motors, uh, Davey Motion, has their new batch of Golden Motor outboard motors uh, and was exhibiting that at the last boat show we were at, the HISFA. They know about our batteries and our EVTV network, and they said, hey, would you guys be able to make a battery pack in a box with almost everything you would need just to hook it up to our motors and have something that has enough power to get the full rating out of these motors but uh, uh, be light enough that somebody in Amsterdam could take it out of the boat and charge it uh, at home keeping their money safe their pack well charged and uh, um, having access to power because a lot of these boats are left somewhere outside where you don't necessarily have a plug I figured that was a great idea. I already had a Pelican case that had been meaning to turn into a mobile solution uh, for quite a while. And EVTV's had this outboard motor for a while and hasn't had a chance to show you it. So I figured I'd loan theirs, make a couple of batteries uh, in a box, and uh, show you what we've got going on with those uh, electric outboards. So I will first take you on a tour through our uh, pack in a box and the motor and then uh, take you for a quick spin. So here we have the electric outboard. Under the hood we find the Golden Motors liquid-cooled 10 kilowatt BLDC motor 
and a liquid cooled controller. We were a bit unsure of the ratings, but have found out that if you hook this up to 48 volt, then you'll get a max of 7 kilowatt, about 10 horsepower. And if you hook it up to 72 volt, then you get a good 10 kilowatt, about 13, 14 horsepower. Um, so of course we went for 72 volt to see what this baby can do. Uh, she really conforms to all the expectations in form and fitment of any modern outboard. Um, works the same, feels the same, weighs a little less for the amount of power that she's going to put out. Um, but otherwise, very unremarkable, no explanation needed. Uh, it even retained its old uh, choke, but it's not hooked up to anything. I guess it was cheaper for them to leave it in than to take it out. <laughs> and the whole thing is hooked up to a negative uh, plus minus setup that I then uh, jerry-rigged onto a Anderson connector because we all really love those, don't we? But they do work and they're <laughs> available, so hey. What are you going to do? Then over on this side is our pack in a box. It's a Pelican case that I bought a couple of years ago with the uh, express intent of finding an electric outboard and uh, making a battery box that you could charge at home. I was thinking of uh, 15 or 1600 amp hour cells for a 48 volt system, but now we needed uh, 72 volts. So we went with 24 40 amp hour cells, all packed in there nicely. And for our little prototype setup, we have a um, fuse, which is overrated at 400. Uh, this system is drawing a max of 140. And um, don't ask me how I know that paralleling 235s doesn't quite cut the mustard. <laughs> Not for long, anyways. Um, besides that, we have a little 150 amp, 150 amp shunt for a EZV JLD404 amp hour meter. Uh, how do we get voltage for our amp hour meter, you say? Well, by integrating a tiny little DC DC converter. We have a uh, DC DC converter that uh, nominally has AC input, 110 to 240. We figured we'd just try it. You know what, you give this little baby uh, 80 volts or 70 volts of DC power and she'll uh, give you enough 12 volt wattage uh, to power the JLD. So that keeps it all nice and snug uh, in the box. And all of that is then connected up to a Anderson connector. And we can kind of stick out like this and uh, keep the spray out. Then if this whole setup works uh, for long enough, uh, we can make a, a nice watertight connection. And for higher power ratings, we could you know, possibly add a contactor and have a, uh, a switched 12 volt input, or like a, you know, a power on a key input would probably be the best one. Uh, um, so your leads would be safe and uh, uh, dead unless turned on and you would have some security with the key. Maybe it also helps to lock and unlock the box. Who knows? Anyways, prototype version uh, 101 quickie quick. Um, let's see if it works. Okay, now we're going to see what it's like when we go out. What all do you need to do to start an electric outboard? Um, start by hooking up the power. That seemed to work. And uh, doing the rope. Always the toughest part. Um, let's uh, lower the motor. There we go. And now when we engage power, nothing happens because we need our dead man switch.
That said, we're all hooked up. Let me push off a little. Oh, still got my rope. Wait a sec. So, <laughs> set management 101. Well, back with the dead man's cord. And we're good to go. First thing you'll notice, not the world's quietest electric motor. But that's okay if she has some power. This is what you would consider a uh, city speed. I promise Jack and Brian I'll be doing some good watt hours over time and distance measurements for uh, the Delta, our Joni, and this uh, little uh, outboard craft. Right now we're doing the quick and dirty though. We got 79 volt and this is 12 amps and we're doing about six or seven kilometers an hour which is our uh, Amsterdam city limit. Earlier this week, I clocked her, uh, this boat, at doing 33 kilometers an hour and drawing 10 kilowatts. So that's about the range she has. I'm going to come up here. I hope the wind's not too bad. And then come around and show you what the power is like. Okay, we don't have time to go uh, outside of the sluices today, so we'll do a little uh, bad boy in the city of Amsterdam. Woo! There you go. Evie Grin. <laughs> Uh, this little baby has power. Um, over the next weeks or so, we hope to get some time to uh, show you more extensively what these can do. But in the meanwhile, uh, start pestering Jack and Brian for your own uh, electric outboard and uh, start building a little mobile solution using Cal CA or CAM series cells. And uh, you'll be ready for a lot of fun in the sun. And uh, this project's quick, man. You don't need a lot of conversion time, you know, get your setup going, plop off the old, pop on the new, and uh, you're out on the water. See you back on the side <laughs> later. later. Well, I hope that was fun. We're going to do it after I shoot this. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, uh, You'll all be seeing it if I don't manage to uh, um, fall overboard or <laughs> dunk everything in the water. Final bit of update before we let you go. Um... Jack's new Delta is in the paint booth as we speak. Uh, we visited her a couple of days ago to see how this aluminum builder master craft packet uh, came together and uh, started looking like a really pretty new speedster of the water. Let's take a look. Well, today we're back at Gilles Bozenbau with uh, both the old Delta and uh, new Delta inside. Old Delta needs to uh, get a retouch on our paint job. Um, roughing around, we've definitely made some damage, different points, but for instance, yowza. And uh, as she's going to be the main exhibit at our stand at the expo next week, she's going to get a new coat of paint and uh, a good glossy finish. 
which should make her show ready. Inside we have Delta 2, let's take a look. Delta 2. One shot of the man finishing up Delta 2. Good project? Bad project. Good project. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay, Delta, you're going to get a new coat, a new glossy finish, and you'll be all show ready next week. I hope they make you pretty. See you later. There she is, daughter of Delta. <laughs> I don't know what her proper name will be once she is christened in the States, but I do know she is an attractive lady, and I can't wait to see her in bright red and uh, show you all what that's like. In the meanwhile, uh, we're going to get ready for next week's Marine Expo, and uh, definitely going to keep building. <laughs> you all keep building, and I hope I see you next week. Take it easy, guys. Bye-bye.